Hi, physics fam. Um, we are going to run through some graphing examples. So here we have three different position time graphs. So this should be a review. The first one, we have no motion. The position stays the same. For the second one, we can see that we have a nice linear relationship. Um, so we're increasing our position as time goes by. And then here on our third example, we have a scenario where we're increasing our position, but we are changing how quickly we're moving our position. So the first thing that I wanted to do is take a look at this middle one. Um, we talked about this being a constant motion. Um, so we can look at our increase in our y-axis or our rise over our run or increase in our x-axis and be able to determine the slope of this line. So when we look at the slope, our slope gives us our change in position over our change in time. And we know that the units for position are meters and the units for time are seconds. So this shows us that the slope of a position time graph will give us our velocity. So we have to keep in mind that velocity is a vector quantity, so it's going to include both magnitude, so the numerical value of our slope, but also our direction. So this slope is a positive slope, so it would be a positive velocity. If our graph instead looked something like this, um, we would still be able to get the, the magnitude or number version of part of our velocity by taking the slope, but the negative that's associated with this line uh, tells us that the velocity or movement, our change in position, is going to be in the negative direction. Here we're gonna move on to velocity time graphs. These are a little bit more challenging because we're not as used to drawing these out. So the first scenario, um, we have a horizontal line here. That is going to show us not a constant position, but a constant velocity. So our velocity is on the y-axis and that value is not changing as time progresses. So we can see that we have a horizontal line. Uh, if we were to put that in this bottom quadrant here, the only thing that would be different here is that um, it's moving in the opposite direction. It's still constant, um, it's still the same numerical value or magnitude, but it's going to be an object moving in the negative direction as opposed to the positive direction. If we look over here on this next one, um, we have a nice linear relationship, but now as time increases, we have an increase in our velocity. So as we move through time, our velocity is increasing. So we can see that motion or that change in our velocity um, on the y-axis. So if we were to do the same thing that we did in our last example, where we look at the rise over the run, we can get our slope. So in this scenario, our slope, the rise was our change in velocity, and our run is still our change in time. So now we're given a completely different equation, same format, but now we have change in velocity over our change in time. And we know that acceleration uses this as our equation. So anytime we have a change in velocity over a time period, that means that our object is undergoing acceleration. We can see that the slope makes sense if we look at our units. The units on the y-axis are meters per second, and our units on the x-axis are seconds. So we have meters per second per second, or it's more commonly listed as meters per second squared. And we know that those are going to be the units of acceleration. So we can find the slope and determine our acceleration from a velocity time graph. Now we can also look at something a little bit different here um, that we didn't do in our position time graph. We're going to go back to our original velocity time graph with the constant velocity. Um, if we were to look at the area under this curve up until this point in time, we can actually determine something 
interesting. So if we were to try and find our area, this is a nice rectangle. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. Our length here on the y-axis is velocity. And then our width here along the x-axis is going to be time. So if we multiply velocity by time, we can get a pretty interesting piece of information. So let's think about it in terms of units like we did with the slope. Our velocity units are meters per second, and our time units are seconds. In this scenario, I'm going to put that over 1. We don't usually include that, but I think for this demonstration it will be helpful. This shows that we have seconds in both the numerator and the denominator, so they cancel out. This leaves us with a unit of meters. And we know that the unit of meters represents displacement. So if we look at the area under this curve, we would get displacement. We can do that with our second graph as well. So if we come over here to the second graph, our curve is a little bit different this time. So now we're looking at it being a triangle. So we would just find the area of that triangle. We'd do 1 half base times height we would still end up with the units of meters, giving us our displacement. The next thing that we're going to look at are acceleration time graphs. These ones are a little bit nicer, still challenging because we probably haven't looked at an acceleration time graph before, but in this class we're only going to use constant acceleration examples. So that means that we're only ever going to see beautiful horizontal lines. So we can get our acceleration time graph from this. Um, but we can also do what we did with the velocity time graphs and use the area under our curve to find something to give us a little bit more information about our motion. So if we were to go ahead and find the area under this curve up until this point, we have a nice rectangle. We know that that's going to be length times width, so we're taking our acceleration and multiplying it by our time. And we know our units for acceleration are meters per second squared. And our units for time are seconds. Again, we're going to put that over 1. So if we look at this, we have seconds in the numerator and a seconds in the denominator, which leaves us with meters per second, which we have already decided are the units for velocity. Something we want to keep in mind with these examples is that we've been taking the area in the positive quadrant. We can still take the area in the negative quadrant. It's going to be a little bit weird feeling because when we have taken physical areas, that's going to be a positive number. But in our case, when we're working with vectors, we want to include that negative as a direction. So if we were to look at the area under this new curve here, then we would end up with a negative acceleration and then a time. So we would want to make sure that we're including that when we look at our velocity value. All right, so let's go ahead and summarize everything that we've looked at. We have talked about position versus time graphs, velocity versus time graphs, and acceleration versus time graphs. We started off with our position versus time graph, um, and we found that we could find our velocity by looking at the slope of the curve that we were looking at in our graph. Uh, then when we were looking at our velocity time graph, we could do the same thing, find our slope, and that gave us our acceleration. Then when we looked at our acceleration time graphs, we were able to not only find our acceleration, but determine our change in velocity by looking at the area under the curve that was given to us in our graph. And then we were able to do that exact same thing in our velocity time graph to get back down to see what our displacement was. We looked at the area under our curve. So this diagram kind of summarizes all of the steps that we took to be able to find different aspects of information about the motion of our object depending on which type of graph we were dealing with.